All right, everyone, we're back at it the next morning, and we already have our first salamander very quickly. I think this is a young spotted dusky, but it's possible it is a Chituka dusky. I'm going to go with spotted on that one, though. First tarp of the day. All right, next salamander, Richard just found a Ruper. A little bit more colorful than the ones we saw yesterday, but the ones in this area can get a lot nicer than that, so... We'll just let him go and keep flipping. Really want to see a spring salamander today though. That's the big target. Spring salamander and potentially snakes. If you've ever wondered what a red salamander larvae looks like, there you go. He's got spots and looks quite a bit different from the normal Desmog and Eurecia larvae we see. And he's pretty big and they get quite a bit bigger than that too. And here is yet another new species for the year, a nice pickerel frog. He's actually not particularly nice, he even looks a little bit unhealthy, so hopefully we'll get to see a couple of these guys in better condition later this spring. And here is our target species. This is a larval form, so still not exactly what we were hoping for, but... And here's another new one. This is Desmognathus chiaha, a very recently described dusky salamander, just like uh, Desmognathus prolapsus. But these guys are endemic to basically North Georgia and North Alabama, which is really cool. And uh, the way I can tell this is chiaha rather than a spotted dusky, is because the much lighter overall appearance, and if I were to be able to flip him over on camera, they have a much less spotted belly. Their belly is more of a mosaic than spotted, so. But these guys are actually one of our biggest Desmogs. They get gigantic. Hopefully we can find a big one today, but if not, that will suffice. There's a bigger, slightly nicer looking Ruber. This guy was actually under a rock right by the creek. But we're getting closer to a spring. We've seen a larvae and an adult Ruber, so. We'll keep our fingers crossed, but normally we would have found one by now. Here we have a land desmog and our third red salamander of the day. Still no real screamers, just some pretty average looking Ruber. I think the first one yesterday with the black face was my favorite, but uh, we'll just let that guy go. We have changed trajectory and we are now looking for snakes. There's a ground skink and a brown snake supposed to get up to as warm as 67 degrees today potentially and the salamanders don't seem to be cooperating so I think we're gonna look for snakes for the rest of the day but I think that's our first look at a ground skink for the year also I just noticed there's a scorpion right here if I don't point it out a million people will comment you missed a scorpion so I pointed it out hey right, Richard just flipped our next brown snake of the day very nice he's nice and warm Apparently the most active snake species right now, the ever-present brown snake. Well, there's brown snake number three for the day. Very small one. All right, well, we'll put this guy back. Very nice. Three snakes for the day, not too bad, even though they're all brown snakes. All right, here we have yet another brown snake. And uh, Richard's got a smooth earth. Double flip, and another new snake species for the year. Well, it's shaping up to be a pretty snaky day. That is brown snake four and earth snake number one for the year. So I think we're up to five total snakes now. The first smooth earth snake of the year, and uh, our next snake species for 2023. It's been a pretty solid day so far. We've still got a couple more things to flip, so I'm going to let this guy go, and we're going to get to it. You want to go back through the crack? Nice. And here we have an anole and yet another new snake species for the year. Look at that, a little ring neck. It's been a lot of small snakes today, but I'm just happy with winter snakes. If y'all will recall last winter, we were not finding these numbers of snakes until late February, at least in the northern part of Georgia. Well, look at that guy's belly, pretty cool looking. Well, according to my car, it's 66 degrees. It doesn't quite feel that warm, but hey, we had a pretty good day. I think we ended up finding six snakes of three different species, and that's not bad at all considering I was planning on looking for salamanders today, and that's what we spent most of our time doing. Never did find our spring salamander though, so I guess that'll probably be on the docket for next week, but for now, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. 
All right, everyone, well, it's the next day. It just got dark a little bit ago and we had a nice rainstorm move in. So I'm gonna go do a quick pass and see if there's any wood frogs out. Yes, I'm going to keep trying for the wood frogs until they show themselves, so. All right, we got 58 degrees at 6.30 tonight, so it's a little bit cooler than it was last time, but I think it'll still be pretty good. We'll see. It's not really soaked yet. It's only just started raining, so we might have to come back a little bit later and try again. All right, we got big toad action already. Look at this guy. Big old American toad. What a handsome dude. He's off the road and safe, so we're gonna keep cruising, hoping for that wood frog. And here's a nice upland chorus frog, and I can actually hear some chorus frogs calling in the distance, which is progress from last time. I did not hear anything last time I drove the stretch, so hopefully that's a good sign. Well, would you look at that? Oh my goodness. It's just as exciting as it was the first time. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is so beautiful. Take a look at that. A beautiful adult wood frog right here. This guy looks like he's been calling. I'm assuming that's a male. Our first wood frog of the year. And it happened a mile and a half from my driveway. That is so fantastic and so awesome. And I am getting very wet right now, but I've taken a couple photos of this frog. I'd say it's probably a little bit prettier than the first one we found in this county, which was last March. But still, they can come a lot nicer and I'm hoping we'll be able to find some really truly stunning individuals in this population eventually. I'm hoping this won't be the only wood frog of the night. This rain's gonna be intermittent for the next couple hours. So I'm probably gonna run home, grab dinner, then come back out. But very, very nice. It feels fantastic to finally find one of these guys this year, even though it only took us like two failed tries before we got one. If you haven't noticed yet, these guys don't really do much. They're very, very still. I think it's a form of behavioral camouflage if I had to guess, because they just look so much like a leaf. But then when they finally do move, they're incredibly fast and quick to disappear, so. That being said, I'm just gonna let this guy go in the direction he was heading and we're gonna keep cruising. So I'm trying to listen to see if I hear anything that sounds like wood frogs and I don't. I hear lots of uh, upland chorus frogs and that's it. There's a little peeper or something coming onto the road. Let's see what this guy is. That actually might be a wood frog up ahead. I think that's a chorus frog. Park right here and get out and check this guy though. Let's see. This one is a very nice looking chorus frog. And then right up here we have, oh, that's not what I was expecting. A gray tree frog. That's another first for the year. Look at that guy. These guys are incredibly common around here, but it is kind of weird to see one in this cool weather. Normally these guys start really breeding around March, but I mean, it's still early January at this point. So that's a nice early season treat. As you can hear, the, uh, the upland chorus frogs are going pretty much full tilt out there. I'm sure that this is only the beginning of the peak of their breeding season, but it's definitely the beginning of the peak. That's a lot of frogs calling. You know it's loud and you can hear it over the sound of the car. Well, I think our rainstorm might have been a little short-lived, but it's supposed to rain on and off all night. I think I'll probably run home for now, and if it starts raining again within the next hour or so, I'll come back out. What's this gonna be? If this is a wood frog, this will be the closest I've found one to the house. It is not. It's a bullfrog. Right here where all these bullfrogs were in the last episode. Of course. Hey, here's our first salamander. Nice little marbled. Got some nice spotting on the sides. Look at that. Beautiful. Here's another weird one. A green tree frog. We got green and gray tree frogs tonight. Very, very odd. That's a new species for the year. We're gonna get to February and not have any new species to look for because we found them all already. At least all the common stuff. All right, well, this guy's out of the road. And here is another marbled salamander. Very nice. Look at that one. All right, we're back out here for round two and here is our first find, a nice little Southern two line. I think this is a big gravid female, but very nice looking salamander either way. 
a man. <laughs> All right, well, this little guy is another new ranid species for the year. This is a green frog, which can be differentiated from the bullfrog by that very faint dorsolateral fold that runs from the eye to the leg there. That's how you differentiate this species from bullfrogs, at least the easiest way. Bullfrogs get a lot bigger, and green frogs just have a much different body shape, but that's a lot more difficult to pick out than just looking for that simple little fold right there. It's definitely the easiest way to tell. But since this guy's a metamorph, it's actually very tough to see the fold. As they grow bigger, it becomes a little more prominent. And here's another salamander. This is actually our first four-toed salamander we have cruised on this stretch of road. We're not too far from where we walk them up very regularly, but they are so small they're quite difficult to see on the road. This looks like a gravid female to me. You can see she's very plump in the midsection. Really nice looking salamander, but she has eggs to lay, so I'm going to make sure she gets off the road safely. Oh, we got a big one. Wow. Wow. He's got the orange. Oh, Look at him. Wow. It's <laughs> quite fast. This guy is in a hurry. Understandably though, because he has somewhere to be, it is breeding season for these guys and they're going to be making their ways across very many dangerous roadways. So I'm sure he is heading to a pond, probably the pond where he was born to place his spermatophores and hopefully successfully reproduce. Very, very nice looking salamander. Potentially our last find of the night unless something else pops up, we are on the way home again. The second round has not been quite as productive as the first, but this is a good sign. Hopefully more stuff will be out. There's another little two line. This guy is just not gonna stop moving. <laughs> Actually, I think both of the two lines we've seen tonight have been gravid females. I definitely don't see any Siri down there. And here's another marbled. It's been a decent night for salamanders, much better than the last time we cruised out here. And yet another marbled. We're not even really cruising the super marbledy stretch. This is just the froggy stretch. <laughs> the stretch we normally walk, I think, actually has the most marbleds. All right, guys. Well, that marbled salamander was the last salamander we saw on the road that night. And our episode species total is up to 21 species. I think I labeled 20. So if you feel like going back and finding the one thing that I didn't label that I noticed, you can count them up. But of those 21 species, 10 of them were new for the year, so we are up to a total of 27 species for the year. Pretty crazy looking back at the numbers, seeing just how much overlap each episode has, but we still continue to get new species. Eventually that's going to stop until we start traveling a little bit more in the springtime and picking up species that don't live where we live. But yeah, lots of snakes this outing, lots of new species. Pretty exciting for January in my opinion, and hopefully this will only continue as the days continue to get longer and ever so slightly warmer. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.